And tonight, I was thinking, what's the thought for the night for Pub Theology? And uh, I was thinking about oh, something that's cool that's going on in my life. And um, how many of us in the bar tonight have kids? How many kids? How many parents we got here? All right, very, very cool. I got three little boys at home. They're uh, eight, six, and two. And um, really cool thing happening with, uh, with my eight-year-old. His name's Cole. And uh, you know, you have kids and you hope that your kids grow up to do great things. They hope your kids grow up to be good people. And um, you meet somebody like John doing food rescue and you think, you know what? For me, I think, man, I don't know. Maybe one of my kids will grow up and they'll do something awesome like feed the hungry or somehow change the world. And as a parent, you know that even if they end up just, you know, working at Circle K or whatever, you'll still love them. You don't care. But I was thinking about this, and one of the cool things happened is a couple months ago, my eight-year-old son came and he said, Hey, Dad, he said, uh, how long do I have to be, how long do I have to be to get um, baptized? And uh, as a pastor, it's kind of a big thing, right, when your kid decides, Hey, I think I actually believe in God, right? And uh, I think I believe in God, and I think I actually want to, like, do that baptism thing so that uh, people, like, know that, like, I believe in God. So, as a dad, you're kind of like, uh, I think you get this, right? But at eight years old, you're not sure, you know, what, what does he understand? What does he not understand? So, I've been having these coffee hangouts with my son. And uh, one of the coolest things, to, you know, to, to put, you know, four o'clock appointment, you know, coffee with Cole and see how excited... My kid gets, gets to go, you know, have coffee with dad. It was pretty cool. So we're there, and I'm just like, well, why don't we just kind of start out and uh, explain how all this started and kind of what the purpose of being a human being is. And so this week, we're hanging out. Turned the first book of the Bible. We read about how God made you and me. And he says in Genesis 1, 26, he says, God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our likeness. So that they'll rule over the fish, sea, and the birds in the sky, and over the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. It says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created the male and female. He created them, and he blessed them, and he said, be fruitful and increase, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And I said, hey, buddy, here's the deal. God made you, and he made, and he made humanity, and uh, he told us to fill up this world and take care of it. I said, uh, the original creation for us as human beings was to live in this paradise with God and a loving relationship with this God that loves us and join him and what he's going to take care of the earth. And so then I went through some other scriptures and I read about how things got screwed up, how we as humans decided, you know, I think, um, I think we can do things on our own. Maybe we don't need God help. And uh, this thing called sin entered the equation. And that's in a couple chapters later. And, um, and so um, I chatted with him about that. And then I got to the point where I explained to him this really cool thing, which is the most well-known scripture, right, in all of the Bible. And it's the NFL's favorite scripture. It's John 3.16, right? And I said, here's how this thing uh, really comes to pass. It says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And uh, that's a pretty cool thing to hear that you can be loved by this God, to be kind of re-engaged in this relationship of the way things were supposed to operate. But I said, but it gets cooler, Cole. I said, here's the deal. You don't just have this peace with God and wait to die. And then the bonus is, hey, you get to go to heaven. Because to me, that's kind of boring. Heaven's cool, but just sitting around trying not to do bad stuff seems kind of boring to me. But I said, here's the cool thing. There's another scripture, right? And it's the kind of life that John lives with food rescue and a lot of cool people, a lot of the volunteers that help us out here with pub theology. And it's Ephesians 2. And uh, it says a really, really cool thing. It says we're saved by grace, but then it says this. It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. I said, Cole, here's the deal, buddy. You get baptized, you say, you know what, I'm cool with God, I'm doing this thing. I said, but the amazing part is that you actually get to join God in doing what he's doing to fill our world up with faith 
and hope and love. And not only that, you're created specifically by him and he's got stuff prepared in advance for you to do. You're eight years old now, but every day you wake up, God's love is new every morning and he actually has a mission for you to fulfill where you can see this world change for faith, hope, and love. So someday when I'm uh, old and gray, which kind of freaks me out because I've got this patch of gray gems right here. It's about 10 hairs and they keep multiplying and gaining friends. But someday when I'm really old and gray and my kids are my age, I hope I can sit back and have fond memories of these times we had coffee together and see that they've lived every single day. They've made it the most of that day. They've made it a masterpiece and they've left this world more full of faith and hope and love. They've walked into the actual good works prepared for them to do. And if you're here tonight, you're listening to my voice, I can promise you two things. God loves you more than you'll ever know. That's the first thing. The second thing is this, he actually invites you to join him in doing what he's doing, making this world a place full of faith and hope and love. You have the opportunity to be the workmanship of God, created to him to do good works, which is prepared in advance for you to do. And that's a pretty amazing invitation. And that, my friends, is your Pub Theology thought for the evening. If you have any questions, you can text them in to 317-550-5070. We'll do our best to answer them. I'm going to do a big giveaway here in a minute where somebody that deserves to win the grand prize more than anyone else in the bar is going to go home with some really, really cool stuff. And we're going to cheer for them and vote them in. But right now, Rick Shaw is going to play a couple more tunes. So uh, text your questions in. We'll try to answer them. There's the phone number. And uh, we'll have a little conversation. We're going to give some more stuff away. So... Thanks for having out, coming out tonight, hanging out at Pub Theology. We'll be right back with some uh, some more stuff. Here's some more music.